Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 1000. 120 page 1120 let's begin shall we we'll start with number 16 in number 16 we are told that x cube times x squared minus 5 equals negative 4 we are further told we are told the x has to be positive and I'll tell you in a second why that, why that is a requirement here and the question simply is what is one possible solution and when they're asking for one possible solution that's exactly what it means and that's exactly what we're going to do we just going to look for one solution so and we know that it has to be positive it has to be positive why not try one let's try one see what happens so x cubed, x squared times 5 has to equal negative 4x, and if it works, we're done. So if you put in 1 here, 1 cubed is just 1, 1 squared is just 1, 1 minus 5, 1 minus 5 is negative 4, on this side we have negative 4 times 1, there you go, it works. There you go, 1 would work. So would 2, if you were to try 2, 2 would also work. Let's try 2, see what happens. If you were to try 2, 2 cubed is 8, 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 5 is, so 4 minus 5 is, is negative 1, so here we give 8 times negative 1, and we'll see what we get here, 4, negative 4 times 2, there you go, it works, so it's up to you, you can plug in either, either 1 or 2, now why do you suppose they said that x has to be positive, x has to be positive because the solution to this problem is also negative 1 and negative 2, negative 1 and negative 2 would also satisfy this equation. You can try it out yourself. But the reason why they put the condition here that x has to be positive is because it's not possible. It is not physically possible for us to grade in negative numbers on a gradient problems. The proper answer tells us have to be a positive number. You cannot grade in a negative number. So put in either 1 or 2. If you like, At the very end, if we have the time, depending on how it goes, if we have the time, I'll actually show you the classical solution, the traditional solution, the algebraic solution, and you will see how this thing has negative 1 and positive 2, uh, negative 1 and negative 2 also as a solution. Number 17. But in the real exam, it is not necessary for us to waste our time trying to figure out those solutions because nobody is asking for it. Here we are told that 7 over 9 times x minus 4 over 9 times x has to equal 1 quarter plus 5 over 12. Let's see what we can do. The so first thing we notice is that here we have the same denominator. So 4 7 minus 7, 7, 7 9 rather, 7 9 minus 4 9 is just 3 9 7 minus 4 is 3, so it's just 3, 9. 3, 3, 9 x equals 1 quarter plus 5 over 12. Next thing you notice is that 3, 9 is just 1 third. 3, 9 is just 1 third. Here we have a denominator of 3, here we have a 4, here we have a 12. Let's find the common denominator just to make our life easier. The common denominator here would be 12, right here. 3 times 4 is 12. Let's multiply this side we want to make this denominator 12 let's multiply this top and bottom by 4 let's multiply this top and bottom by 3 so here we have a denominator of 12 3 times 4 is 12 here we have 12 and here we have 12 since the entire equation has the same denominator it has a common denominator now denominator ceases to play any role we simply have to look at the numerator 4 times 1 is 4 4x and here we have 3 times 1 is 3 plus 5. 
there you go, that's it. 4x equals 8. If 4x equals 8, x would have to be 2. And if you like, you can put it in a verify. Let's go to the next one, number 18. Number 18, see what it has to say. Oh, number 18 is a geometry problem, but this is a tricky one. Pay attention. Pay attention to the, to the picture. The picture looks something like this. I'm going to first draw it in a wrong way so that you understand what's going on here. It is not like this. It's not drawn like this. Had it been drawn like this, these two angles would have been equal to each other. These would have been vertical angles. But that is not what we're dealing with. What we're dealing with is a situation where, where this triangle has a little bit of a bigger angle. I'm going to exaggerate it so you can see it. So these two angles are not equal. If you look at if you look at the picture carefully. And of course they clearly tell us. They tell us that this is y degree and this is z degree. They tell us clearly that they are, these are two different measurements, which is why there are two different letters. Had there been two, had they had they been equal, they would have used the same letter. What else do we know? We also know that this side is equal to this side. We further told that this side is equal to this side. In other words, these two triangles are isosceles triangle. We are also given, this is given to us, we are given that 180 minus z has to equal 2 times y. But we are also told that y is equal to 75. There is a lot of information that is given to us. We have to read it carefully and make sure we employ all the bits of information, otherwise we can't solve it, obviously. So let's begin then, shall we? If x is equal, if y is equal to 75, we can put it right in here, which means that 180 minus z would x to equal 2 times y, which is 75, which so is just 150. Subtract 150 from both sides, and we find that 30 minus z equals 0, which means z must equal 30. There we go, we're making progress. z is 30. If z is 30, then this angle, let's call this angle A and angle A, and why do we use the same letter? Because these two angles are equal. Why are, how do we know that these two angles are equal? Because it's an isosceles triangle. So if this is 30, then this angle plus this angle has to equal to 150, which means that this is 75 and this is 75. A has to be 75, and this A has to be 75, which only makes sense because 75 plus 75 is 150, plus 30 is going to give us 180. What is the question asking? What is being asked here is, what's the value of x, this angle right here? This is what we're interested in. What is the value of x? Well, if this is 75 and this is a straight line, then x plus 75 has to be 180. Let's put it here. x plus 75 has to equal 180, which means x must be 105. Because 105 plus 75 is going to give us 180. And that's what it is. They're looking for the value of x. Let's take a look at 19. I don't know what is wrong with the blackboard, but it's not raising properly. In 19, we are told that H is 50 more than F. But well, that's one equation. An equation is a sentence. That's all it is. A sentence in the English language, in mathematical, in the language of mathematics, a sentence is an equation. There is an equation, first equation. Second equation, we are told that 2H and 3f equal 1700. There we go. We have two straightforward, simple linear equations. Since we have two independent equations, we can figure out the two unknown. And the question here is, which unknown do we want to find out? We want to find out the value of h. Or can we put it here? We want to find out the value of h. Well, if we want to find out the value of h, let's solve this thing. Let's first write it down and we're going to solve this equation in terms of f. So H is, is means equal, 50 more than F. So whatever F is, whatever F is, we have to add 50 to it. Because this guy is 50 more than this guy. There is an equation right here. Let's solve this thing for F, bring the 50 to this side, H minus 50. If we substitute this one in this equation, we can find out the H. Let's do this, shall we? So we know 2H and N means plus. 3F equals 1700. 
But F we know, F we know is simply H minus 50. Let's put it in here. So it's simply 3 times H minus 50 equals 1700. And don't forget the 2H here. Let's open the parentheses. We're going to get 3H. So here we have 2H plus 3H and then 3 times 50 and forget, remember this negative, so it's negative 150 equals 1700. Nothing to it. 5H equals 1700 plus 150. 1700 plus 150. 1700 plus 100 would have been 1800, so it's 1850. Let's divide both sides by 5, shall we? Let's divide both sides by 5. If you divide this side by 5, the 5 drops out, which is the whole point. How many 5 does 1 have? 1 has 0 5. 1 has no 5s. That, go, that one goes and joins the 8 and becomes 18. And how many 5 does 18 have? 18 has 3 5s. 3 5s three fives are 15. After we take away 15 from the 18, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to that 3? That 3 goes and joins this 5 and becomes a 35. And 35 has... 7 fives. We're done with that one. How many five does 0 have? 0 has no fives. There you go. Our edges looks like our edge is 370. And that's all there is to it. That was number 19. Let's take a look at number 20. See what see what's going on in number 20. Number 20. In number 20 we are told that in triangle in triangle ABC we are told that triangle B is 90 degrees. Well if triangle B is 90 degrees then that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to draw a 90 degree triangle, a right angle triangle. And angle B is 90, let's call this B. Let's see what else do we know. We are also told that B to C is 16 and A to C is 20. So it doesn't matter where you put it, A, B, C, let's put it here, A to C is 20, actually it does matter. I was being stupid when I told you that it doesn't matter. Of course it matters because the biggest number has to go facing the biggest angle. B to C is 16. The question is, and the question is, what is the sign? Oh, we're not, we, we, are, we are far from getting done here, but let's finish this up here. Let's finish this up here. What else we are told here? We are not told this side, but we can very easily figure out this side if we wanted to. But we, not, we don't have to worry about it. Let's look at the next triangle. In the next triangle, we are told DEF, triangle DEF, is a similar triangle similar to triangle ABC. What does triangle uh, similar mean? Similar means all the sides are proportionate, all the angles are proportional. We are told that it is one third the size. There is no question mark there. It is one third the size. So let's draw DEF. Let's draw the DEF. So here is our D, E, and F. They have to they have to be corresponding. If we started here like A, B, C, it has to be D, E, F. You cannot just go willy-nilly. This angle is 90. This angle is 90. We are told that it is one-third the size, which means that whatever this side is, A to C, this side is D to F is one-third the size. Even though it looks nothing like one-third, as a matter of fact, I drew it bigger than this guy. But that's okay, we're not drawing it to scale. Just understand that this side, D to F, is one third this side. So this is 20, if this side is 20, this has to be 20 over 3. And if this side is 16, this has to be 16 over 3. What is the question asking? That's the whole point. The question is, what is the sign of, what is the sign of F? Now, we could have stopped, we could have stopped this, in this problem long time ago, if we understand the sign of F. Right here, sine of f. Oh, we, have to, we do have to figure out the third side. 
we do have to figure out the third side because sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. We have to figure out this side, so we have to figure out this side. So let's 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 do very quickly. Let's figure out this side here. We could do Pythagorean theorem, but if you were to do Pythagorean theorem, it will take too long. You have to be able to recognize that this is simply five times four, and this is simply four times four. Four times four, five times four. So this has to be three times four. It's a three four five triangle. It's simply a three four five triangle. This is a twelve. If this is 12, then this is 12 over 3. Now, we're looking for sine of f. We could have stopped long time ago if you understand the sine of f. f is f is right here. Sine of f is same as sine of c. Sine of c is simply 12 over 20. Sine of c is simply opposite, which is 12 over 20. This guy gives me the same thing because it's just 12 over 3 divided by 20 over 3. Threes are going to cancel out. Of course it's going to be the same thing because it's, they are similar angles. Let's continue here. Sine of f is instead of 12, we have 12 over 3. And instead of 20, we have 20 over 3. As you can see, threes drop out and we end up with 12 over 20 just like this guy. And 12 over 20, when you reduce it, divide top and bottom by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3 and 20 divided by 4 is 5, so it's 3 fifth. The answer that we're looking for is 3 fifth. Sine of, sine, of sine, of, sine of f is 3 fifth. You can plug it in as 3 fifth, you can plug it in as 6 tenth, or you can plug it in as 0 0.6, whatever you like. I prefer to stick with the fraction. If I, if I don't have to just grade in the decimal, I don't want to mess with decimals. Just grade in 3, three fifth or 6 tenth if you like. 6 tenth is also possible. 6 tenth is also possible. And what I mean by possible is that if you grade in 6 slash 1, 0, as you see we have 4 spaces, 1, 2, 3, 4, and they give us 4 spaces in the exam to plug in the answer. So we are fine. We are done. That was the last problem. At this point, I'm finished with what I, what I wanted to do in this video. Now for those of you who are curious to see how to solve number 16 in a classical manner, in a traditional manner, in the algebraic manner, <coughs> I promised you that we will do it at the end. So I'm going to do it here very quickly. Number 16. We're back to number 16. I'm going to show you the algebraic solution. x cubed x squared minus 5 is equal to negative 4x. And since we are told that x is more than zero, well that's good to know because that means x is not equal to zero which means we can divide the entire equation by x and we'll be fine. Otherwise we cannot divide the whole thing by x because if we divide by zero it becomes undefined but x is not zero. If we divide the entire equation by x this x is going to drop out and x cubed is going to become x squared and that's it this x squared will remain the same and becomes negative. We could continue with this thing, we could continue with this thing the way it is but it will just make it very messy. Let's substitute it. Let substitute a new variable. Let y equal to x squared. And we're going to write this equation in terms of y. If y is equal to x squared, then this x squared is just y. This x squared is y minus 5 equals negative 4. Let's open the parenthesis. We get y squared minus 5y and bring this negative 4 to this side plus 4. We're looking for two numbers, two factors, so that when we multiply them, we get positive 4, and when we add them, we get negative 5, which is negative, negative 1 and negative, negative 4. Break it up into negative 1 and a negative 4. There you go. Negative, negative 1, or negative y, and negative 4y is going to give us positive 4y. Positive, positive 4y squared, rather, not y. y squared and y, we have a common factor of y. And here we have a common factor of negative 4. Now, as we look at these two quantities, as we look at these two quantities, we see negative 1 is common here. And y over y minus negative 1 is common. Let's continue up here. Let's continue this guy over here. Take out y minus y minus 1 as a common factor. And here we are left with y. And here we are left with negative 4. And that whole thing has to equal to 0. That in turn implies that in turn implies that y has to be either 1 or 
y has to be 4 because y minus 1 is equal to 0 and y minus 4 is equal to 0 if y is equal to 1 then y is simply x squared which means that implies that x squared has to be equal to 1 or x squared has to be equal to 4 if x squared is 1 that implies that in turn implies that x has to be either positive 1 or negative 1 or x can also be positive 2 or negative 2 there you go there are four solutions but we cannot plug in we cannot plug in negative numbers which is why they told us in the beginning that x is positive because it's not possible to plug in negative 1 or negative 2 we're going to stop right here tomorrow we'll meet again and we'll start a new section section number 4 on the next page which has which allows you to use calculator this this section that we just finished of course the calculator was not allowed i'll meet you tomorrow okay in the event that you decide to work with me that you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the SAT I do both the math and the verbal part visit my website kashwaniprep.com kashwaniprep send me an email from there and we'll talk some more okay bye now